Harry, I don't, I don't know, know if they, they can, can hear you. you. Right? Good morning. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> My, My name, name is Terry Staley, and as a member of the congregation, I am happy to welcome you to Millwood United Church. This morning, some of us are here in person, while others participate live on Facebook. Each Sunday, we gather to share and celebrate, to discuss our sacred values, and to confront the mysteries of life and love. We welcome you no matter where you may be in your spiritual quest or journey. Seekers, doubters, questioners, and believers are all welcome here. We also welcome you regardless of your sexual orientation, gender identity, or cultural background. As an affirming congregation, we work to make the church a place where all of us feel included and safe. We also acknowledge the land. This building in Southeast Edmonton is on the traditional territory of Treaty 6, a traditional meeting ground, gathering place, and traveling route for many Indigenous people. We honor and recognize the rich cult artistic, cultural, and spiritual traditions of Cree, Nakota Sioux, Métis, Dene, Salto, and many more Indigenous communities that call this land home. Wherever we find ourselves this morning, let us remember the people who have called, cared for this land over thousands of years. All of us are treaty people for which we give thanks. Friends, I am glad to welcome you today. Each day at this church, people join in, reach out, and make a difference. To read more about the work of our church and upcoming events, you can subscribe to the e newsletter with What's the Buzz on the church website. This e-newsletter is put out every Thursday. Does anyone have any announcements this morning? Good morning, my name is Janice Martin and I am organizing a walking group. We have been doing it for about a year now. Liliana kindly reminded me that I had said we would be walking at the ravine through the winter until spring and she told me on Monday it was spring so I had to make a decision as to what was going to happen from this point forward. So um, under the gun I decided that we would be walking meeting at the velodrome this Monday and Wednesday at 1.30 and walking through the Mill Creek Ravine um, from the velodrome, Argyle Velodrome to Connors Hill and or Connors Road and back again. So if you're interested in walking with us uh, 1 30 Monday, 1 30 Wednesday at the Velodrome. See you there. Good morning. I'm Carla Jansen, and I'm speaking on behalf of our Congregational Care Committee this morning. And I'm excited to announce that we are planning a Parents' Day Out on April the 22nd. So, this is for some of our young parents with children to have the opportunity to go leave their children here and go shopping or out for dinner or whatever they want to do. And um, so I'm, the plan is it will be on April the 22nd from 3.30 till 7. And if anyone is interested in helping out, plan some games, activities, or with food, um, please come and talk to me. I'm happy to have you join our, our little committee. Thanks. If you have any announcements that you have for next week, please let Liliana know uh, on, in the office by Friday. And I'd like to thank Brian and Jeanette and the Handbells for providing the music today. And now I welcome Reverend Dale Johnson to take over the service. Thank you. Good morning. A warm welcome uh, to all and to those who are joining us uh, online today or who will be joining us later on YouTube. We're, we're glad that you're with us next week. Um, is Palm Sunday. And we'll be celebrating with the liturgy of the Passion, but also with uh, the celebration of the Last Supper, since it's 
uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, so come and celebrate with us. We are blessed today. Now get the name. We finally got a name for them. This is the Bells of Millwood's United Church. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, let's take a deep breath, put our feet on the floor. Come and find a quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Find a room for hope to enter. Find a frame where we are freed. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we may see all the things that really matter. Be at peace and simply be. During the Lenten season, we've been practicing a new ritual. It's the Lenten Tenebrae ritual. Tenebrae means darkness. And so during the six weeks of Lent, we've been heading from light into dark. This is the fifth Sunday, uh, and so the fifth candle will be extinguished after our reading. Okay. Oh, Jesus, you wept over your friend Lazarus. Do you still weep for us? Do you weep when forest fires rage, when homes are burnt, animals die, and the smoke blows? Do you weep as floods destroy homes and livelihoods? Do you weep for those suffering from illness and for their families? Do you weep for those who live in a myriad of worries, anxiety, and depression? Do you weep for injustice, for those who experience ongoing racism, bullying, and discrimination of all sorts? Do you weep for those who have no more tears to shed, who have no more prayers to say, who have no more dreams to dream? then we are willing to shed our tears with you. We shed tears for the world you love. 
As we extinguish the fifth candle, let us remain seated as we sing, Don't Be Afraid. Stand as we sing. A song must rise for the spirit to descend. Oh, 
pilgrims on a journey, fellow travelers on the road, we are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. As pilgrims on our journey, let us come and worship this day. Amen. Brian, are we, do we have gremlins in the system this morning? We shall see what the uh, what, what's going to happen? Children, can you join me up front? Oh, look at Here they come. Oh, oh, oh. Lead the way. You can get to choose where you want to sit. Right there. She says, I like that spot. And I like that spot. Now, where are you going to sit? She says, I'm going to at the end. No, I'm going to sit next to my brother. <laughs> These two, you know, I think they like each other because often I see them sharing the same seat. That's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah. So today we're talking about um, something called the golden rule. Let's see if we can see the... Whoops! Now this is going to be fun. All day today. The golden rule. Do you know what about the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Pardon me? Oh, at school. That's a good place. Let's see, let's see another one. Well, actually, that's not exactly true. I'll tell you why in a minute. The, the golden rule means essentially to treat others as you would like to be treated. So, and we call it the golden rule. But I'll tell you something about that golden rule. Take a look at this. These are all the world religions. Well, they're not on this screen. There we go. <laughs> These are all the world religions. And you know, there's something very similar to the golden rule in every religion when it comes back on screen. There's Christianity, there's Islam, there's Judaism and Hinduism and Buddhism and Sikhism. And, and they all say things very similar to the golden rule. We're, we're having problems with this today. So, caution. Use, use the golden rule. Treat others as you would want to be treated. So if you want somebody to hit you, I guess you can hit somebody else. But if you don't like to be hit, then I guess it means you don't hit other people. What if you do what? If you, if you get, get what? If, you, if I get something, you're saying if I, if I have to get treated, if I want to. But what if, if I do get treated like the other way? So do I do the other way with the other? No, your golden rule is to do unto others as you like them to do to you, not to do unto others as they do to you. That's a different rule. Okay, well, that's one more time. Now let, no matter what happens in life, be good to people. Being good to people is a wonderful legacy to living behind. Who is that up there? Who is it? Peanuts! Yeah, Charlie Brown's not there, but all the rest of the gang are. Okay, so now we need a song. What can I do besides hitting people? What can I do? Let us stand as we sing together. And you get to go to Sunday school when we're finished singing.
Sunday, Sunday school. school. And in scripture reading, we have Terry. We, we don't, don't have scripture. scripture. We've got Don. Don, Don. I, I was ahead of myself, Don. Would, would you, you like, like to come up and do a This Is Us for us today? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Don Grabinski. Um, I came here today to tell you about the inner city pastoral ministry. Uh, you might have heard me or noticed in what's the buzz. I'm asking for the support of the congregation once again for financial donations to provide 250 lunches to the inner city community that will be distributed at the Bissell Center. Um, I've been doing this for so long, um, so it's not everyone has been around as long as I have with this congregation, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of history. Uh, Along with my wife, Lil Grabinski, we were associated with the High C Youth Group approximately 28 years ago. Um, somehow, I don't recall exactly how it happened, but we ran across uh, a lady pastor, Suzanne Coles, with the Inner City Pastoral Ministry, and came up with the the idea of doing an inner city walk in the idea around the Bissell Center. So we thought that'd be something good to do with the High Sea Youth Group. We had a great time with them. We had amazing camp trips and Halloween parties. And um, in retrospect, when I think about it, you guys ever remember hearing of Knockador Ginger? I, I, remember, I remember one of our groups was, I guess, when I think about it now, I guess was actually targeting select members of the congregation and uh, we would try to catch on film one of the youth group members coming up ringing a doorbell running and then try to get on film the blank look on the face of the person answering the door so anyway we had lots of fun but um we thought maybe we could do a little more so uh after these walking tours uh Suzanne somehow convinced us that, yeah, no problem, you can pull off uh, serving a lunch to our community. Uh, sorry to back up, the inner city pastoral ministry serves a lunch every Sunday after their worship service that happens at the Bissell Center. The ICPM is not the Bissell Center. Bissell Center just allows them to use their space for, for the church service. Um, so, so back in, in the day, day we did try it. We would go half youth, half adults. Um, again, I would ask the congregation for supplies. Everyone would contribute in ways at home. At that time, we were supplying sandwiches, fruits, and vegetables. And the majority of it was all made at home and brought here and gathered. And we would take it down and actually serve the lunch. Um, Things have changed. Uh, everything is now done in a prepackaged way. Um, we actually need a commercial kitchen if we are to provide sandwiches in the future. So everything's prepackaged, and hence my ask of just funds to go out and buy the stuff and then and then supply it. Um, uh, so they. After all these years, uh, that's probably the only lunch food available often on Sundays in the inner city. Um, the goal is about 250 uh, bagged lunches is what I'm hoping for. Based on the past, somehow this community here, you guys always came up with enough uh, Around 100 loaves of sandwiches, which would usually feed between two and 300 uh, people. So we're hoping to keep the same thing going. As the youth have disappeared, um, we've just kind of kept it going as, as an adult thing. Maybe we'll get some kids again and re revive it that way. Um, but in the meantime, that's my ask. And uh, we've got three weeks, um, and we'll be serving this once again. So I just wanted to share all that with you. If anyone has any questions at all, please just see me, contact me at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you. So donations are greatly appreciated.
you need help putting the, the lunches together? Um, not sure yet. <laughs> okay. I'll see okay. when I get it together. Okay. They, I'm also confirming, but ICTM may allow uh, up to four people to help hand the bags. Up, okay. Okay. Which, again, since COVID started, wouldn't be a first. We weren't even allowed anyone. Great. Thank you, Don. Let us pray. May our hearts and minds be open so that as we listen to the words of the ancient scripture, we might find wisdom in our living today. Amen. Matthew 7, 7 to 12. Ask and keep asking and you will receive. Seek and keep seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep knocking, and the door will be open to you. For the one who keeps asking receives. The one who keeps seeking finds, and the one who keeps knocking enters. Is there any among you who would hand your daughter a stone when she asked for bread? Would one of you hand your son a snake when he asked for a fish? If you, with all your faults, know how to give your children what is good, how much more will your Abba God in heaven give good things to those who ask? Therefore, treat others as you would have them treat you. This is the whole meaning of the law of the prophets. Hear what the Spirit is saying today. May I be blessed with understanding. Would you pray with me? Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditation and reflections of each and every one of our hearts be truly graced and blessed by you, the one who has created us, the one who teaches us, and the one who sustains us. Amen. So, troopers, this is the fifth Sunday in Lent, this means this is the fifth and final sermon series, or sermon in the series of uh, Lent on the Mountain, because we're doing Palm Sunday next Sunday. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount is focused on Jesus' view of ethics and discipleship, and during the Lenten season, we have had the opportunity to look more closely at our own lives and begin the process of spiritual self-assessment, asking ourselves difficult questions Am I living in a way that reflects my life, my faith, and the teachings of Jesus? Is that even possible today? Uh, and today, uh, we're looking at uh, chapters, or chapter 7, verses 7 through 12, um, and it has a dual focus. The first is on asking, seeking, knocking, and then the second is on the golden rule, as we talked uh, with the children. Now, listen. We're going to try something with this sermon, and if it doesn't work, we're going to punt. Because this sermon requires a lot of slides, and if we have mechanical difficulty, pray for me. <laughs> Jesus said, blessed are the seekers. Spiritual seekers are those who follow a path of spiritual discovery that enables them to comprehend and embrace their connection to creation to the world, to all living things, even the universe. Seekers are open to experiencing and encountering God in both traditional and in non-traditional ways, in meditation, prayer, worship, in music. Uh, come and find a quiet center with bells. Uh, nature, in relation with others, including with animals. Uh, seekers are not bound by or restricted by a denomination or a religion or a creed or a dogma. They often find inspiration and truth in the teachings and writings of many religions and even of those, God forbid, who are atheists. Ooh, that's an interesting thought. Spiritual pilgrims, seekers, people on a journey of discovery, 
people on a pilgrimage, or in Spain, pellegrinos. Ah, Spain, walking the Camino. The, the pilgrimage of the Santiago. Are you familiar? Have any of you done this? Yeah, great. Uh, the Camino de Santiago is a pilgrimage rooted in medieval origins. It leads to the tomb believed to be that of the Apostle St. James in the crypt of the Santiago de Compostela Cathedral. And the Camino was and still is Europe's oldest, busiest, and well-known uh, pilgrimage route. People come from all over the world to join in the, the spirits of pilgrims long ago who have journeyed the Santiago. And they come from many faiths and religious perspectives, and some come from no faith perspective at all. So let's try this, shall we? Ta-da! Spiritual seekers walking the Camino de San Diego. I did this in 2019. A spiritual pilgrimage. So these are the pilgrims. Uh, we were wearing green t-shirts and on the back it said West Coast Pilgrims on it. And these are friends of mine from Seattle on the left. Go back a minute. Uh, I'm waving my hands and that's throwing you off. Um, and that's the, the fat one is me. And then, and then a woman who was a member of our congregation in, in Surrey and a, and a dear friend, Helen. And now we've lost it. So. Uh, the, the, the pilgrimage has many routes, and this is the French route. We didn't do the whole thing. It starts in France and goes up over the Pyrenees, and then down through Papalano, where they have the running of the bulls. Um, we started in Saria. Saria is about 110 kilometers from, uh, uh, from Santiago. So it's, the next slide will give you a better idea. Where, so that's where we did. So we did that in about seven days. Um, and we, you know, we did the, the easy way. We worked with a company and they booked our hotels so we didn't have to stay in the dormitories with the lice. Um, and, and, um, and we, um, not only that, they, they would carry, take our, our luggage. So we had a backpack, a day pack, and they would take our, our luggage and was there when we got to the, the hotel uh, in the afternoon or the evening. Uh, next slide, please. So this is, we started in Saria, we took a train from Madrid to Saria, spent the night, and then we began. And so the next slide shows you where we started from. This is, now so these are mileposts, or they're, you'll see them along the way, making sure you're on the right route. Um, that's, I know it's frustrating. Uh, we're at 110 kilometers is where we started. Uh, next slide, please. So it was warm that day, and we were just getting, you know, although we practiced and did a lot of walking, oh, it was hot. And we find, found along the way there are places uh, every eight, five, eight, ten kilometers where you can stop and, and get a refreshment. And we found on this hot day this most delicious orange juice made from fresh oranges, where they put the oranges in, they squeeze out, and it was ice cold. And my friend Helen said, thank you, Jesus. It's just a spiritual experience. Uh, next slide, please. And then we saw beauty in many plays, uh, in many ways. Next slide. As we walked along to Porta Marin. Uh, keep going. And, and this is just incredible. You walk along, and you find these Romanesque churches, many of them have long since been abandoned, that are still there. This is, uh, there's crypts around, there's, uh, people have been buried there, um, just sitting there, just incredible. Some of them are open, and, and many of them aren't. Uh, next slide. Maybe not. So, I don't know if you can see this closely. The, the Camino can be, at, like any seeker's journey, it can be a challenge. Some people have left their socks and their shoes. I've had enough. I don't like this hat anymore. And some people have left prayers 
and maybe some curses. I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, okay? okay? And then there are places where people have taken rocks with a prayer and have placed up um, as, as part of their continual uh, seeker's journey. Uh, continue. And this is in Puerto Marin, and so, so this is St. This is James, Santiago, who's uh, pointing us the right direction. That way. <laughs> and in, in Puerto Marin, uh, there's incredible churches. Another slide, this is inside that church. And then as you continue down, there's another church at the end of the walkway. Um, you, you would think they were Catholic, you know. Uh, another... So this is the, the next morning, and it was raining when we, when we started our pilgrimage that day. And you started with a, a bit of a climb, a hill. And so we did. We took off, and we found more incredible structures along the way. And then just the path that before us that opened up, and it started getting warmer as we walked. And so at, in front of another beautiful church, you can see Dale has this, getting a little warmer, and then we continued. Now this was about 30 degrees at the moment, and it was quite a climb up this hill. My friend Helen, who was in her late 70s at the time, um, not quite 80, I was waiting for her at the top of the hill. My other friends were back further, um, and we made it up the hill, and we kept going. But by the time we got to, yeah, the, the, keep going, that's, that's great. By the time we got to our next location, I've never seen a woman so exhausted. It was hot, it was just a long, tiring day. Um, and, uh, and one of the other woman, in fact, ended up taking a taxi because she, she got a migraine in the midst of the process. And I, and she didn't want to walk with a migraine. Uh, and we got there. She was so tired when we got there, she couldn't figure out how to get her key into the door of her motel room. So we, we got her in. She was revived for dinner time. So, And by the way, in, in, on this pilgrimage, dinner isn't until 8. This is in Spain. So it's not, you can't eat early and go to bed because there's, a, <laughs> there's no food. Okay. Next slide. These are inside this, this church, uh, these, one of the churches uh, that we experienced. And this is another side place. You can see that my friend Jace has taken off his boots. He says, my, my feet need a rest here uh, on my pilgrimage. And then we have a blackout. Uh, and this is Malid. Malid is, is actually, it's not near the ocean at all, but Malid is known for its octopus. Uh, uh, which, which I was the only one who liked, I might have to say. Uh, so there, there are people from all over the world that do this journey. And we ran into uh, a group of women, four or five of them, from Brazil, as, as we were ready to cross these rocks. And, 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 and one of the women says, Can I take your picture? Okay, <laughs> so so uh, as she did, we also ran into uh, uh, a woman and her son. They were Jewish from Tel Aviv. Um, and I think he had been in the army because he one of, part of his arm was missing. Um, and I asked him. Uh, we were sitting next to each other at dinner one night. And I says, "So what brought you on this pilgrimage?" And my mother loves to trek, he says. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, that's what they were doing, and they were embracing the experience. If we can get the next slide, we'll get it. Oh, here we go. And there's actually, the next one is even a closer look at this. This is, again, San Santiago is everywhere, uh, St. James. And uh, so we ran into a Santiago and yet another church to welcome us. Uh, another slide. Some of us got tired along the way, so we said, ah, I'm going to take off my hat and my poles off to the side. Next slide. So as you can see, sometimes there was nobody in front of you, and other times uh, there were others on the journey. 
Um, and as I said, this is a path that's been going on since the Middle Ages. So you can just imagine uh, the folks that had, had, had gone this way over the years. Now, uh, next slide, please. Um, as, as we entered along, and we would see these, these incredible church. Next slide. Uh, and my friend Helen, I'm in front. <laughs> uh, next slide. Uh, now, I don't know if you can see it closely, but on the left, there's the, the symbol of a, of a shell. It's a scallop shell. These are my Santiago socks. Uh, my Camino socks. At the, that. And so you have to keep looking to make sure you see the scallop shell and, and the, the signs to make sure you're going uh, the right direction. Uh, and, uh, and then we finally climbed up a hill and looked out and saw our destination. And that's, that's the, the cathedral in, in Santiago. Um, it used to be the tradition from the top of this hill, it's still your maybe 10 kilometers, that some people would walk in barefooted and others would actually walk on their hands and knees or on their knees uh, uh, crawling. Uh, good for them. I didn't do that. <laughs> um, I did find it very interesting. It, was, it wasn't horribly hot, but it was a warm day. And, and it was only 10 kilometers or so, but it felt forever because we were getting close and we were then in the city and trying to find uh, the way in the city. Is, it's, they can't put the shells as close as they would in other places, so you have to look really careful. Are we going the right direction? But we finally got there uh, to where we needed to be. Um, and maybe not. And this is, this is the cathedral. Uh, now, when we were, we were there, the, the cathedral itself, you could go inside, and we did. Some of us did. Uh, but they were not having masses there. This is, if you know anything about Santiago, this is the cathedral that has, I call it the smoking purse. It has the huge... Uh, thurfer? Thurfer? I think they call it. It's... It, it has the incense in it, and it, they, they swing it from one end of the cathedral to the other, or back and forth. It's just, it, it, it's quite, a, and they pull it up on a rope, and it smokes, and it, uh, it's, uh, it, I didn't get to see that, <laughs> because, but uh, we did go in. There's a tradition, if you've been on the, the pilgrimage, you can go in, and there's a statue, of course, of St. James up in, uh, up in the chancel part of the church. You can go up. And you can touch it or say a blessing around it. And then down underneath that are supposed, are the supposed uh, remains of the saint. And people go down, and we did go down, some, uh, kind of, but we did. And uh, they kneel, and you can even go up to, to the window and, and offer a prayer. It's all part of, of the pilgrimage experience. Okay. Um, and that's another view. Now, Beyond Santiago, the pilgrimage actually continues. We, we, <laughs> we did it on a van <laughs> to Finisterre. Finisterre uh, is at the ocean. It's referred to as the end of the world because people thought that's what it was in those days, back in the Middle Ages. It's, it's mile post zero, if you will. Uh, of the, uh, and there's the sign, may peace prevail on earth. And the last slide, for they really believed it was the end of the, of, of the world that they had come to, and then they would return home, um, sometimes burning some of the things that they had brought with them uh, along the way on the pilgrimage. Next slide. So, we seem to understand the value of oil and timber and minerals and housing, but not the value of unspoiled beauty, of wildlife, Solitude and spiritual renewal. Next slide. Uh, and Jesus said, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. For those who ask, receive. Those who seek, find. Those who knock, it will be opened. And the final slide. 
We're called to be seekers, pellegrinos, pilgrims on a spiritual journey. And then we go to the next part of Jesus' teaching that day. You know, I made an interesting discovery when I was writing my doctoral dissertation. I discovered that, that the doctoral dissertation uh, was much about uh, giving voice uh, and, uh, to what was obvious and simply writing what everybody probably knew in the first place. My dissertation was entitled, now get this, Spiritual Care, the Transformation of Pastoral Care in the Multi-Faith Milieu of an Acute Care Medical Center. I reflected on what it is like to seek to spiritually connect with those whose spiritual or religious affiliation is different from my own or from our own, someone who does not identify themselves as a Christian. I said there were three essential elements to seeking uh, to connect across religious and spiritual boundaries. We must be, we must engage with others with a willingness to be open, so an openness. We must engage others with dignity, and we must engage others respect, with respect. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. That's my doctoral dissertation, essentially. Well, it was more complex than that, but you get the idea. In hindsight, I realized that in some ways my dissertation was simply the restating of the golden rule. I was advocating for treating others, especially those who are different from us, as I myself would want to be treated. The golden rule dressed up and made very fancy in my doctoral dissertation. This simple teaching by Jesus, to treat others as you would have others treat you, is the basic foundation, it's the taproot, if you will, of Christian life. It is also the common sense formula for living as a decent human being, regardless of your spiritual or religious perspective. So why is it easily, so easily overlooked, so easily disregarded in our day-to-day -day interactions with others? When someone approaches us for a handout, when someone cuts us off with their car, <laughs> My latest frustration is the person sitting in front of me in their car and the light turns green and they don't go. <laughs> when someone does something at church differently than the way we would do it. <laughs> when someone wants something from us. When a person representing a political party we disagree with knocks at our door and rings our doorbell. That happened to me. I'm from the... United Conservative Party. I didn't swear. I just, no, oh, thank you. I gave it the office. No. Uh, when someone articulates an opinion or perspective that is diametrically opposed to ours, when somebody wears something that you would never wear, would we treat each other differently if we put a big sign as people entered the church, the golden rule is observed here. Oh, there, there's an idea. When we, want, when we follow the golden rule, when it's reflected in the way we live, racism is erased. Bigotry is vanished. Homophobia evaporates. And bullying abruptly stops. So with just, just a few short words, Jesus reminds us of the ethical foundation for Christians, the mantra by which we are called to live our lives. May we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and the will to live these words in our life. May it be so. Amen. And now the bells of Millwood's United Church.
So you can tell your friends that uh, you really like the church because they're all a bunch of dinglings. <laughs> Thank you, choir. Our hymn of response is When We Are Tested, it's found in More Voices, number 65. As you're able, let us stand as we sing together. come to that part of the service in which we have the opportunity to be thankful and grateful for all the blessings we received and a chance to share our gifts and our treasures with others. Uh, and we can do that in many ways. Uh, with our, our treasures, uh, we can uh, do it through pre-authorized uh, remittance through PAR. We, can, uh, we can't do it through jewelry yet. We'll do it through jewelry in January. Um, but in other ways, in many ways we can we give, including through your computer. Um, so, we also pass the plate and, uh, and we accept checks and money. So, uh, will the ushers please receive our morning offerings?
to stand and sing together grateful. grateful hearts and thankful spirits, we offer our time, talent, and treasures, transform our offerings so that they may bring hope in the midst of hopelessness and affirm life even in the face of death and destruction. Hear our prayers. Amen. As we prepare for a time of prayer, I'm wondering what joys and concerns we have to, to share today. Uh, if you have a joy or concern, lift your hand, and we'll bring a mic to you. I have one of each today. My name is Wendy. Um, tomorrow is the processional um, for the funeral for the, our fallen officers. It just breaks my heart. I just... I don't know how their families um, or the families of anyone serving has the courage these days to just let them go when they leave in the morning or when their shift starts. Uh, there were three vehicles past me on my way here with their sirens going and their, their lights flashing and, and now I think, oh shit. There's, um, pardon you me. Said, you said, what did they all do now? <laughs> now what's going on and so they're just in my head and I'm hoping that they're in yours and in your heart too. Um, my joy is that we have a second mom and a two-year-old boy who've joined us in our home. So now the older daughter of our first family has moved out on her own. She has a full-time job and we had Daria and Matvi join us on Wednesday. They have been in Canada for not quite four weeks. So we have two little families and two little boys, and we're just really, really honored that they're with us. Wonderful. Thank you. Other joys or concerns? There we go. I just have one uh, joy. Um, my niece, a 16-year-old, uh, she decided that she wanted to spend spring break with me, and so she had to convince her dad to let her go on a plane by herself. But she is here, and she is visiting. Good. Good. Other? If not, I then... Have, sorry, Dale. I have a grateful story to share with you. I'm grateful that uh, Lindy and I were able to go to Mexico for a couple of weeks and had a wonderful time. But uh, on day five, we had a detour. And the detour was that my <clears throat> wife ended up having appendicitis. So we needed to go see the doctor who let us know that uh, he would meet us in the hospital in the next two hours to do surgery. So here we were in a foreign country with foreign language, and we're about to have uh, a surgery that uh, we certainly didn't count on. But uh, grateful for the fact that the doctor was marvelous, the staff was exceptional, the Mexico hospital experience was interesting, but uh, very grateful that everything worked out very well. So Lindy was able to convalesce uh, on the beaches of Mexico over the next couple of days, and she's well on her way to uh, a full recovery. So it but was quite, cut, quite the experience. That cut into golf, all that. For her it did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if I remember correctly, though, something else just recently happened to Lindy. You got older. Oh, yes, yes, yes. When, when we got home, she had, yeah, she had a significant birthday last weekend. Yeah, all right. 35. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 35. <That's> right. <laughs> Happy birthday. Okay, thank you for the, the, the sharing. Let's, uh, 
prepare now for our prayers as we sing Dust and Ashes, Touch Our Face. creator and creating, and have called us to be faithful stewards of this garden we call Earth. When we hear of a devastating tornado in Mississippi and Alabama killing uh, a couple dozen people at least, may we be moved from our complacency to do the work necessary to reduce carbon emissions and save the garden that you have created for us. We also pray for those who have died in this tragedy and for those who grieve their death. And we pray for the families of those killed in a chocolate factory explosion outside of Philadelphia. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Tomorrow is the funeral for the two Edmonton police officers who were killed while responding to a complaint about domestic disturbance. Continue to be with the families of those two young men and with the Edmonton Police Service and the city as the community gathers to celebrate their lives and mourn their deaths. Hear our prayers, O oh God. And be with us as we pray for those within our own community of faith. Be with those who struggle financially. Be with those who struggle with loneliness, who live with anxiety and depression. Be with those recovering from surgery. Be with those who live with cancer or other life-threatening illnesses. And be with those who walk the path of grief and loss. Hear our prayers, O oh God. And now be with us as we sing the prayer of Jesus. Closing him today is a song like a healing stream. Let us stand and sing together.
like a healing stream in a barren desert. Spirit water bringing life to dusty earth. God is trickling through our lives as in a dream unfolding, promising revival and rebirth like a healing stream. A gentle rain on a thirsty garden. Spirit water come to nourish tiny seed. God is bubbling through the soil to coax a new creation. Yearning for an end to want and need. Like a gentle rain. Like a river strong. With a restless current, spirit water rushing on to distant shore. God is carving out a channel in a new direction, calling for an end to hate and war, like a river strong, like a mighty sea reaching far horizons. Spirit water with the love both deep and wide. God is working in our hearts to shape a new tomorrow. God will always challenge and provide. Like a mighty sea, like a river strong, like a gentle rain, like a healing stream. My friends, as we prepare to leave this place today and our worship together, may you always remember that you're held by a love that will never let you go. For in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We're not alone. And as we walk into the world that awaits us, may we, excuse me, may we have the faith, may we have the heart, may we have the eyes to see the face of Christ in everyone we meet, and may everyone we meet see the face of Christ in us. May it be so. And now the familiar uh, closing prayer by Don Basic. We sing. Yes. <laughs>